Okay. On the Appropriations Committee, you recently voted against giving additional retirement benefits to educators, setting the $200 million price tag as your rationale. Critics say that you've let down educators. Can you defend your vote? Most certainly I can defend my vote. Um, I have a, a wonderful record for, um, for teachers, for students there. Two years ago, I was endorsed by the um, MEA, the Maine Education Association, for my voting record. I've always voted to support the pay increases so that we could get good quality teachers um, on starting salaries. Uh, I've had a very good record on that. The vote that you're talking about was in the Appropriations Committee, mm -hmm. and that came in the last couple of days of session. It was, would have added $190 million to our unfunded liability and also would have added $10 million to our next year budget. This was something that I could not justify at the time to add that type of thing. I go door to door and I talk with taxpayers when I do campaigning and everybody is very worried. Everybody is very concerned. Uh, this would have benefited a group of people that only between 1983 and 1993 um, that were under what was called the cliff on it. Uh, to reach back 15 years and change a retirement age from 62 and lower it to 60 when Social Security has increased their retirement age and to give additional benefits uh, to people who already have jobs and adding so much money to the budget. I. I looked at it solely as a budgetary issue, that this was something the state of Maine could not afford, uh, you know, especially in this time. They've been trying for 15 years to change something that the McKernan administration changed, uh, and this was not the time to do that. So I, I, I certainly can defend it from a financial point of view. If Maine becomes more fiscally responsible and we're not in an economic recession or a crisis, would you support a similar plan? That. I would have to look at the plan. I'm very careful never to co-sponsor a bill until I've actually seen the language on it. It's not even the language on the bill, but it's the fiscal note that we call and how much it's attached to. What I was in support of is on this particular bill is that there was a portion to do a um, committee to look at um, even making um, having some of the teachers go into the social security system versus the main retirement system. One of the biggest things is that the benefits aren't portable. So we need to lo really look at the portability of the benefits so that if somebody does want to retire, they, you know, instead of us pushing the age from 62 to 60, uh, let people retire earlier who want to, but make sure that their benefits are portable and they're not losing any of the benefits on that. So I think um, I was very much in favor of that as a, as a compromise to have kept the bill alive, but um, it really turned into an all or nothing, and we ended up uh, not doing anything with the bill this session. Let's turn to the current status of our economy. Everyone's worried about how is the $700 billion plan going to affect them. Uh, recently, the Senate and House uh, approved this bill. Uh, do you, number one, do you support it? And number two, what does this mean for an average Joe on Main Street in Saco? Well, obviously, anything that the federal government does has um, the effect of on the state budgets because we get so much of our money from the federal government on it. Uh, it's already shown an effect now as far as Wall Street because we had a situation on our bonds that we were not able to go out immediately on the bonds. Uh, we try to get the best possible interest rate on the bonds. Um, we have another uh, bond issue on for November, which I am supporting. Uh, there's a lot of matching money on our bonds. Uh, sewer, water, infrastructure. If, state, if the state of Maine had to pay for all of that, uh, it would cost anywhere from two to seven times as much because of the matching funds that we're getting in. So bonds uh, are really good because uh, they help stimulate the economy. They're going to be great for jobs now where so many people are concerned about their jobs. Uh, but the interest rate, especially um, on the bailout package and what's happening on Wall Street, is going to have effect on the state of Maine uh, as far as bonds and also from money that we uh, may be receiving from the federal government on other programs to support. One of the bond referendums is question one, dealing with the uh, raise uh, or possible raise of the beverage tax. Do you support that? The, um, I voted actually for the, the DIRIGO and um, the Appropriations Committee when we did it. We did have a meeting a couple of weeks ago and we were briefed. Um, it looks like, according to all of the polls, that it will um, be repealed. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so the um, Appropriations Committee did sit down with all of the finance people to see what we would do um, if it was repealed. And I feel fairly confident that um, the Darago program will still just go back to the old SOP, the Savings Offset Program on that. When it was put to us pretty much um, not in the middle of the night, but at the end of session, we were under the impression that if this was not funded in a different way, we were risking 13,000 people being thrown out of the insurance program. That is not going to happen. Uh, so as far as the repeal goes, I think that when so many people sign a petition, the legislature, and especially myself, stand up and we listen and say, this was not thing to do. I think um, if it's repealed, let's go back to the savings offset program and take another look at it when we're not trying to close a budget in the last couple of days of session. So you would support raising taxes to help pay for the Darago plan? No, I did not say that, Justin. <laughs> I did not say I would support raising taxes to pay for the Darago plan. What I said is that we should go back and look at the savings offset plan. Okay. The savings offset um, is the Darago plan was a, initially set up to help save money in insurance costs by doing a lot of preventative care. Because if we can prevent somebody from getting a disease or having a disease at a later stage, then it costs a lot less to the general public. Um, my husband is a good example. He had prostate cancer, was diagnosed, and he had his prostate out in July. Now, if he hadn't have gone in for his routine PSAs, routine physicals on that, the prostate cancer could have gone to an advanced stage. So instead of going into the hospital, having a laparoscopic surgery, um, coming home the next day and having a two-week recovery uh, with no radiation and no chemotherapy, if we hadn't have done the preventative um, on these physicals, this would have cost, you know, 10 times, 20 times more, plus the recovery period would have been longer. So Derigo is to help people prevent a lot of these de diseases from going into to later stages um, and, and helping people on that. So I'm not in favor of raising any taxes. I'm in favor of looking at alternative ways to, to save money. So you do not support raising the beverage tax to pay for Derigo? At this time, I will probably vote against, I will probably vote to repeal it also. I okay. think that the citizens have given me a very loud mm -hmm. um, saying that they want it repealed right. and I feel confident enough after our meetings a couple of weeks ago that if it is repealed we can still work something out to do it but um, people have spoken and they don't, they don't want it mm -hmm. and we should listen to what the people have to say. Okay. There have been rumors circulating as to your political future, your political intentions. Have you given any thought as to what's next for Linda Valentino? Well, I don't know about any rumors <laughs> for my political intentions. My, um, According to the Constitution in the state of Maine, we have term limits. Mm -hmm. So I've served four years. If I get reelected, there will be another two years. I can only serve eight years. At the same time that I was elected, uh, Senator Hobbins came in. Um, and was elected senator. So basically, Senator Hobbins and I will both be termed out at the same time. Mm -hmm. So my only plan would be to run for Senator Hobbins seat when he's termed out, but that would not be for another four years. Beyond that, I have no plans for leadership, for governor, for Congress, for anything else. Uh, I like being right here in Saco, and I feel a very close bond with all of my constituents. Okay. In two minutes or less, state why you should be re-elected. Why I should be re-elected, I feel, first of all, I feel I've done a good job. That's the most important thing, that I have been very independent in my votes. As I had mentioned to you earlier in appropriations last week, there was um, an article before us to purchase a new airplane. Mm -hmm and I was the only member of the Appropriations Committee to vote against buying a $280,000 Cessna 180 airplane mm -hmm. to basically patrol the highways and catch speeders. Uh, that it went through, the Appropriations Committee decided to buy the airplane, and I was the only one to vote against it. Four days later, um, after it gets out, that why is the state of Maine buying an airplane? Some members of the committee changed their mind and said, let's reconsider the vote. So I feel that 
um, I've been very good to be able to stand up for what I feel is right. And I know the old saying is, um, in order to get along, you have to go along. But I also feel that we have to do what's right for our constituents back home and not necessarily what may be right for me to make it easy on my fellow committee members. Probably the most important reason to for being really elected for any incumbent is the seniority that you have. Where I've been there for four years, I'm on an extremely powerful committee now, the Appropriations Committee. I do a lot of work, and if I hadn't have been there in the several instances, such as the Thornton Academy, SOCO may have um, been more deeply hurt on this, especially on the school consolidation where I fought to keep in school choice to make sure that everything was protected on that. So I think um, I've been very um, aware of what's going on in SOCO, having been brought up here and gone to grade school here. Once again, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Dustin. Thank you.